Let us pray. A blessed Father, you are the God of all wisdom. We can see the evidence of your wisdom in the things you've created all over the world. And when we look at even the tiniest thing like the atom or the cell, human cell, it's so magnificent, intricate, and complex that we can see the excellency of the wisdom of God. When we look at the bigger things like the stars, the heavenly bodies, the universe, the planets, we can also see order that reflect and manifest in the wisdom, on the wisdom of God. When you look at the prophecies that was given thousands of years ago that have been fulfilled to the very letter, we can see the excellency of the wisdom of God. And Lord, this year, as we are making up our mind to live by wisdom, to walk by wisdom, to follow you by wisdom, I pray, dear Lord, that your mighty hand will be with us and you will help us, dear Father, oh God, to get to the point of really knowing, living by, walking by wisdom and actually embracing the wisdom of God. I ask, dear Father, that anything that will want to hinder us from discovering, walking and your wisdom, living by the wisdom of God, appreciating and valuing the wisdom of God, be completely eradicated from our lives in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we follow your wisdom, I pray that your presence will be with us. Your power will see us through your goodness and mercy will make ways for us in Jesus' name. We will live lives that are blessed, just like the people in the scriptures that manifested the wisdom of God. Have your way today. Speak to us by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' glorious name, we pray. In today's service, we are going to spend some time praying on wisdom of God. But before we go into the prayer session, I want to share a short exhortation on the word of God. And this is going to be brief. And then we move into prayers. Uh, because today we are starting by making a commitment with God that this year we are going to live by the wisdom of God. To live by the wisdom of God means we've got to make up our mind to endlessly pursue the knowledge of the wisdom of God. We're also going to practically live by the principles of God's wisdom that we discover every day of our life. And it doesn't stop there, not just knowing and living by the wisdom of God. We will also passionately propagate that wisdom of God. In other words, spread it, share it. Let other people know. Let other people understand. Let other people come to the point of uh, receiving and walking by the wisdom of God. And then the next thing is that we will determinately eradicate everything that is not the wisdom of God. Every knowledge, every understanding that is not of God. You know, the Bible talks about the wisdom that is above and the wisdom that is not from above. That tells us there are certain kinds of wisdom that can be destructive, demonic, devilish, uh, because whatever God does, Satan tries to counterfeit it. That is why we will produce counterfeit wisdom to try to hinder people from actually knowing and following the true wisdom of God. So in the exhortation that I'm going to share with us now, I have decided to title it, A Heart Prepared Unto the Wisdom of God. In other words, having your heart prepared unto the wisdom of God. Having my heart prepared unto the wisdom of God. Why do I choose a topic like that? Because the heart is the center of every action 
every decision, every behavior, every word we speak, the heart is very, very important. It is central. It is what we prepare our heart to do that we will actually uh, be doing practically in our day-to-day -day life. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So as we make up our mind this year that we are going to live by the wisdom of God, that our heart becomes very important, very central to that because it is what you think about, what you focus on, what dominates your heart. That is what is going to play out in your day-to-day -day life. And if you, the, your heart becomes the center of the wisdom of God, where you uh, study and store the wisdom of God, you'll find out that that wisdom of God will then flow out be, uh, uh, to, uh, through your heart to other, uh, to even your actions, attitudes, behaviors, and words. If Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, made that statement that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That is very instructive. Because he's telling us that what fills your heart, your heart is what will come out in your mouth. is what will be demonstrated in your action, in your behavior, in your attitude. That is why we need to start by getting our hearts safe our hearts prepared, our heart centered on the wisdom of God. You feed your heart, your mind with the wisdom of God and you will find that wisdom uh, manifesting in your day-to-day -day living. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, when God was uh, instructing the children of Israel, keeping them commandments, on what they need to do. He, he made this statement to them. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. He started with them, with their heart. That love is not just supposed to be something that we say from our mouth. It needs to come from the heart. It needs to bubble from the very heart of our life. So he starts there by saying, Love the Lord with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. The heart is important. The heart is the center of action. The heart of somebody made a statement that the heart of the problem is a problem of the heart. And so, whatever happens in your heart, whatever dominates your heart is what will be a, a demonstrated in your day-to-day -day life. Now, in sharing this brief exhortation before we go into the prayer session, uh, I, I will just use two examples in the Bible, two people that prepared their heart unto the wisdom of God. And I want us to pick up a few things that we can learn from there, a few lessons that we can apply to our lives uh, 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 there. The first person I want to talk about is a man called Ezra. Ezra was a scribe. It was a, 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 you may call that a, 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 a priest. The Bible called him a ready writer. The background to that story, which is found in Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, is when the children of Israel have been in captivity for 70 years. And they were about to come back. A decree has been issued. They were to come back to their promised land those of them that are great, those of them that wanted to and to live there and carry on with their life. And remember, they've been in Egypt for 70 years. Sorry, not Egypt, in Babylon, in captivity. Babylon was like the, the world power at that time. It's like today, uh, somebody being to America that is uh, considered as the world power today. Great in inventions, great in wisdom, great in so many things. 
And you know, when people come back from places like that, they, they want to brag and boast that, yes, I've been in this place. I know their customs, their wisdom, their practices, and the things that they do. And therefore, I, uh, all the things we used to do in the past, they are just uh, minor things. We can forget about them. We can live without them. That is the attitude of many people today. They want to copy what is happening in other countries, particularly developed countries. And they feel if people live like this, act like that, then that must be the right thing, especially if those people are great, prosperous, rich, and getting a lot of things going on with them all the time. So they tend to drop the things of God that they knew, the traditions of the scriptures. They feel they become like people in the book of Hosea, that the Bible talks about God said, I have written to him many great and wonderful things of my, my law, but they were counted as strange things. So the things of God becomes like strange things to them. Now, at this moment in time, we are told of a decision that Ezra made, and it was a decision that eventually turned out to work out very well for him. It was a decision that promoted him to a position of responsibility. It was a position that enabled him to influence many people, turn the hearts of the people back to God, and led the people into the righteousness and the blessings of God. What was that decision? You find it in Ezra chapter 7, verse 10. The Bible tells us, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. Ezra did what? He prepared his heart. He made a decision. He determined, yes, I've been in foreign land. Uh, I could be described as I've been to, been to this place, been to that, know this, know that. I have seen the wisdom they manifest there, the, the, their customs, their riches. But for me, as I'm going to uh, uh, lead these people of God, I am deciding, I'm making up my mind that I will seek the law of the Lord. Only one thing I want to do. But you see, it wasn't words of mouth only. It was a decision, a determination from the heart that I'm not interested in the wisdom of Babylon, in the culture and customs of Babylon, in the way people in the world do things. You know, today we tend to be influenced so much, and especially now that there is a, a, a lot of things going on by social media, and many of them are not true, are not correct, not really the right thing that people should do. We find people being tempted to follow all those things. There are a lot of books today in the world, and some of those books come up with principles, especially some of these that are, are, are described as self-help books. Oh, I will help you to become this, to become that, to become wise. And what wisdom are they talking about? Often, you find it is not the wisdom of God. It is what somebody just thinks. Oh, this will make you wise. Like the serpent that came to Adam and Eve, or we started with Eve in the Garden of Eden, and told Eve, if you eat this fruit that God said you shouldn't eat, it's going to make you wise as God. That was a lie, a deception. There are many things today that are propagated in books, in magazines, in literature as wisdom, but they are not the wisdom of God. And they are not true wisdom, and they will not help people. Ezra could have easily said, well, I am educated, I am great, I've been to Babylon, I've seen what is happening there, so these are the way we are going to do things. But Ezra decided, I don't want any of that. I want to seek the law of the Lord. I want to sit down and study the Bible. See, it started with that. I want to study it. I want to know it. I want to know what God says. I want to know the mind of God concerning all these things. And he didn't stop there. He wasn't trying to cram his head with knowledge. I came across and was in an article I read in a book uh, or something. 
just within this uh, last one week. And it was talking about experiment that was conducted. Uh, uh, people wrote exams and some of them passed the exam with distinction and so on. Very uh, 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 brilliant people. They, they finished probably from a university. They wrote that exams, passed the exams very well, very highly. And the experiment that was done was that one month later, they brought those people back into the exam hall, gave them the same paper to write the exam. And some of them that passed with distinction, with uh, maybe uh, a, a star, they failed that paper. And it was demonstrated from them that before the, the main exam, these people crammed, they crammed, they read, they stored the information in their uh, uh, conscious mind. And so it became a, a very uh, alive, very uh, easy to remember. Got to the exam point, wrote it out, and passed with excellent result. One After the exam, they just forgot about all those things. They dropped. They're now going to, to other things, doing other things, thinking other things, and then they are brought back in surprise, even the same examination paper, same questions, right? You wrote this last month and passed with distinction. And this time, because they didn't remember, they've relaxed, they failed the exam. So that is why Ezra made up his mind, I'm not only going to study it, I'm not only going to seek the law of the Lord, but I'm going to do it. In other words, I'm going to practice it. The word of God must become practical in our life. It's not just filling our head with the knowledge of the references in the Bible, the statements here and there, and so on. No, we want to actually do it. Let it become a practical part of our life. And as we make up our mind this year, that this year is going to be a year we are going to live by the wisdom of God, we will uh, 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 set our heart to seek out of the book of the law, to read. Earlier on today, I shared with us one of the things that I have done already. So I decided to uh, 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 copy all the references in the Bible. Uh, well, most of them that relate to what I want with respect to the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God. I copied them uh, or I put it in a, a document so I can easily go through them. But not only that, I decided also to record the audio recording so that sometimes I will just put it on. Uh, I may be doing other things, maybe walking on the road or doing exercise in a gym, and it will be playing for me, and I will be hearing because I want to know. I want to get close to it. I want to have the wisdom that comes from God, not earthly wisdom, not carnal wisdom, not wisdom of this world, but the wisdom of God. And I want it to saturate my life, saturate my being so that I know, not only knowing it, I want to practice it. If I come across a situation where people feel this is wisdom, this is how we used to do this, this is what we were told to do, this is how this uh, ought to be, and uh, uh, people say that and do all those things, if, because I have been feeding myself with the wisdom of God, the Spirit of God will immediately tell me that uh, this is not the wisdom of God. This is not uh, the, the, the wisdom you are looking for. And uh, I will then be able to discern that what they are saying is not the wisdom of God. I will lay it aside and then follow the wisdom of God. See, somebody made a statement. I think I've heard it from two preachers. I can't remember who first said it uh, first. Uh, probably, well, one of them would have been Dr. Magmodo. Uh, the founder of the Wisdom Center. And he talked about how he determined at a point to study wisdom, because, to study the word of God. Because in the word of God, you will find the wisdom of God. And he made this statement. He says his objective was to so much know the word of God, so much get the word of God into his life, into his soul, into his body, so that he becomes like a living Bible in himself. So that as he goes about 
if anything is preached by any preacher or said by anybody that is not the, uh, 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 aligned to the word of God, what he has already known will sprung up and say, no, that is error. No, that is wrong. No, that is not right. And that is true. You find that when you fill yourself with the wisdom of God, with the knowledge of God, with the word of God, if anything is said that differs even slightly from that, you will immediately pick it up that, mm, I don't think this is right. Let me go back to the Bible and check whether that is exactly what the Bible is saying. So Ezra made up his mind to seek the law of the Lord and not only seeking it, but to do. But then there is the third thing that he decided to do. He says, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. So it's not just knowing it for myself. Yes, that is good. Because when you know for yourself, you are going to be able to live, live by it. But he says, I don't want to be satisfied by just knowing it. I want to go a step further by actually teaching it, actually sharing it, actually propagating it so that other people will get to know. That is why in our sage to know the wisdom of God and live by the wisdom of God, We've also got to make it a point of duty to share it with other people, to teach other people what God says, what the wisdom of God is, because as we do that, we get to know it much better. I think it was many years ago I read in a book which says that you never really know something until you actually explain that thing to other people. In other words, you teach other people that thing. You may feel you've known, you may feel you understand, but if you try to explain it to other people, you may find out that, oh, you didn't actually know as much as you knew. That is why Ezra made up his mind to seek the law of the Lord, number two, to do it, and number three, to teach it in Israel. And so this year, as we want to seek the word of God, seek wisdom and follow it and make wisdom of God part and parcel of our everyday life, these are the very things we need to do. We need to follow the example of Ezra. There are many things you've learned already. There are wisdom from schools, wisdom from friends, wisdom from books, wisdom from uh, uh, traditions in the society, things you copied or heard, uh, are from the world and different traditions have different, uh, like what they call wise saying, or uh, proverbs, prophet, prophetical expression, and people say, tend to quote them, to live by them, allow them to rule their life. But this year, you are going to say, my number one is the wisdom of God. <clears throat> the second ex example, as I said, I want to be brief in the exhortation so that we can actually spend some time praying and getting, making a commitment, a covenant with God that God, I'm going to live by wisdom. Actually, there are many examples I could have used, but I've just limited it to two to, for, for this morning. The second example that I want to uh, uh, share with us today is uh, the example uh, based on uh, Paul. So we've just seen the example of from Ezra, how Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. And the next example we want to see is that of Paul the Apostle. The topic we are looking at today is a heart prepared unto the wisdom of God. How can you get your heart prepared to get wisdom of God? Because this year we've made up our mind that we are going to live and walk by the wisdom of God. When people see us, they will see a, a model of the wisdom of God. They will see the example of the wisdom of God. They will see the pattern of the wisdom of God uh, in everything that we do. So Saul, uh, uh, well, it, it is now Paul. He started as Saul, but in, at the time we are reading this, uh, uh, he, he, in First Corinthians chapter 2, he is Paul the Apostle. Look at what Paul the Apostle said here. I'm reading First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. 
He says, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. It's talking about human wisdom. I've said earlier, not every wisdom is of God. There are devilish wisdom, human wisdom. And uh, later on in the year, as God gives us the opportunity, we'll touch on all of those aspects. But here, when Paul says, I didn't come with excellency of uh, speech or of wisdom, it's not uh, uh, talking about wisdom of God. He didn't, he didn't say he threw away the wisdom of God. No, he's talking about the wisdom of the world, the secular wisdom, what secular people call uh, wisdom. Uh, uh, so he says, uh, I, uh, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, that is really very important because Paul, as we know, was very highly educated. Remember when he stood prior, Akripa said, much learning makes you mad. Paul, you are beside yourself. You are mad because too much learning has made you mad. And Paul says, no, no, no. That is not the, 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 the reason I am sober. I'm speaking the word of truth. So Paul was highly educated. One of the best minds in those days. Most educated person at that particular time in the history of the world. And so Paul could have decided, as I'm going to Corinth. You see, Corinth was a cosmopolitan city at that time. And the people in Corinth devoted themselves to the search and propagation of wisdom. Wisdom of the world, wisdom from their traditions, from books. And Paul could have said, if I'm going to Corinth to go and preach the gospel, I need to impress these people that I am also knowledgeable. I studied, I know this, I know that. I could maybe impress them with excellency of speech, and oratory, ability to speak, and speak so eloquently and passionately that people will be swept away, even if what you are saying is not the right thing. They will simply follow, they will simply clap and say, yes, this is this. But Paul said, mm -mm, no, I made up my mind. I decided not to come to you with wisdom or, or, or words uh, when I'm declaring to you the testimony of God. He says he actually determined, he made up his mind not to know anything among you that include all their wisdom, all their uh, learning, all their practices. I made up my mind not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all I want to know. That is all I want to share. That is all I want to talk about. You know, the Bible says the Jews require a sign, but the Greeks seek knowledge. And the Bible also says to talk about crucifixion to the Jews, it was like foolishness. And is that the, but to those that believe it is the wisdom of God. So Paul decided it is that wisdom of God, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, that is going to be the center of my purpose, or of my preaching, of my message, of my ministration among you. Yes, you are uh, uh, deciding and treating that as if it is something that is foolish, something that is uh, 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 not worth talking about. But I have seen that that is where the real wisdom of God is, and that is what I'm going to focus on. But Notice there that for Paul, he started with a decision in his heart, a heart that was prepared, a heart that made up his mind, this is what I'm going to follow. This is what I'm going to seek. This is what I'm going to go for. The wisdom of God, the power of God, the understanding of God, the, uh, the grace of God. I want that to be my life. I want that to be my uh, uh, thought. I want that to be my, my knowledge, my focus, and everything that I'm doing will be centered on that. And as you go down to Philippians chapter 3, verse 2 to 16, you see Paul talking about the same thing. What his pursuit in life was, what his ambition, 
what his uh, uh, mission was. And you will also see some statements about the background of Paul, how important the credential that he had, very impressive credential that anybody could look at and say, ah, this is the best in the society. But he started in Philippians chapter 3. I read from verse 2. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof he might trust in, in the flesh. I more. In other words, I had better credentials. I was circumcised on the earth there according to the customs of the Jewish people. That means my parents kept the law. I am of the stock of Israel and of the tribe of Benjamin. I am an Hebrew of Hebrews. In other words, I'm not just an ordinary, uh, 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 an ordinary Hebrew. I am the I he, I am Hebrew of the Hebrews. It's like saying, I'm not just a teacher. I am a teacher of teachers. I'm not just a pastor. I'm a pastor of pastors. I'm not just a bishop. I'm a bishop of bishops. In other words, he was the one that was training and developing all the other Hebrew people. I am an Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law, a Pharisee. Pharisees were considered in those days as the best religious group that existed. Just like today, you may ask which one is the best religious group that is in existence in the world, and people may say, oh, it is the Pentecostal, or it is the this, or the that. But in those days, the Pharisees were considered the best religious group in the, uh, uh, at, at the time. And Paul said here, concerning my credential, he says, touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. What wonderful credential. But go to verse 7. Look at what he made up his mind to do. He says, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things, but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Why? It says for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. In other words, I wanted to excel in the knowledge of Christ. I didn't want to just be a mediocre when it comes to knowing God. When you excel in the, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that is wisdom. So he made up his mind to excel in the knowledge of Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them bedong that I may win Christ. In other words, all these credentials, titles, accomplishments, certificates, possessions, I just consider them as dumb because I want to know Christ. I want to win Christ. It is a decision that started from his heart. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know in verse 10. I mean, think about it. Paul has preached, he's been born again. He's told, or preached, gone to many places. Miracles have taken place. And yet he's telling us here, one thing I want to do is that I may know him. Similar to what Ezra did. Ezra decided to seek out of the book of the law so that he will know God. He will know what the word of God says. And the same thing with you. You want to seek out what the Bible teaches about wisdom of God so that you may have the true wisdom of God in your life. And having that true wisdom will enable you to live right, to live as God wants you to live. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made comfort conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained 
either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended, apprehended of Christ Jesus, of Christ Jesus. Verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So he was pressing forward. The same thing I want to do. I want to press forward in having the wisdom of God, knowing God, living by that wisdom of God, letting the wisdom of God regulate my life, my character, and everything that I do. He ended up in the last two verses, verse 15 and 16, encouraging everybody. He says, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same things. So today, as we start this year, the first Sunday in this year, and as we start this year to focus on the wisdom of God, we've decided to share this message on a heart prepared unto the wisdom of God. I want you to be able to say, my heart is prepared unto the wisdom of God. I want to be able to say that myself, that my heart is a heart that is prepared, prepared unto the wisdom of God. Prepared to live the life God wants me to live. When we've made up our mind like that, and we act like we learned from Ezra, in Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, where he decided, to, number one, to seek the law of the Lord, number two, to do it, that means practice it, and number three, to teach in Israel, the statutes and judgment of God will be on the right path to not only getting the wisdom of God, but also to living by that wisdom and becoming a shining light in this dark world for other people to be able to see the wisdom of God and follow it. And through our teaching of them, sharing it with other people, in every conversation, your conversation should be filled with the words of wisdom of God. And God will help and God will see us through. So as we prepare our heart unto the wisdom of God, I want to conclude this message now. When I conclude it, we will stop the recording and then we'll go into a long session of prayer, praying using the commitment form that we by God to really pray in the wisdom of God in our life. In conclusion, I just mentioned uh, maybe two more scriptures. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. If we are going to have a heart prepared unto the wisdom of God, the Bible tells us, Ye seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want a made for my mouth. It has commanded, and his spirit, it has gathered them. I'm going to seek out of the word of God and read. You are going to do the same. Seek it out. Read about the wisdom of God. As you read everything, even if the word wisdom is not used, just look for the wisdom, evidence of the wisdom of God. When you open to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and you begin to see the Bible saying, in the beginning was this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And begin to look at evidence of the wisdom of God in the pattern, in the order of the creation. See the wisdom of God in everything that, uh, that we did. When you read about the story of Abraham going to the promised land and then go, uh, the descendants go into Egypt for 400 years and God judging Egypt, bring them out with riches and power, look for evidence of the wisdom of God. When you come to the New Testament, the same thing. In the way Jesus Christ behaved, in the way he answered questions, look for the evidence of the wisdom of God. And as you see all those evidence, you want to pray them in and say, oh God, keep me, oh wisdom, like Jesus was wise. Give me understanding like these people were understanding. Give me wisdom like you manifested in the creation of the world, in sustaining of everything, in the things that you did. Give me wisdom. And as you pray like that, 
you will begin to get the wisdom of God in your life. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible again commanded the children of Israel. It says, keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear of these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So when you keep, when you know and you decide to practice and do and teach to other people, then other people will begin to come to know of the wisdom of God. So we're going to pause at this moment and the recording will stop at this point.